Okay guys, this here is the Rebel Dog. Uh, he is what is called a, a, a blue tick uh, coon hound. There, there's quite a variety of them. Red ticks, walkers, black and tans. But uh, anyway, it's a, he's a blue tick. So, uh, so anyway, you can kind of see he's got a little, little coloration there. And uh, anyway, pretty good sized dog. Got, got the long ears. Uh, like a hound does, big nose, uh, real kind of floppy skin, you know, the lay around on the front porch kind of dog, big old feet, it weighs about 90 pounds, so, uh, you know, that's the kind of dog we're dealing with. Alright guys, there's the rebel dog there, in the dog box, uh, he's ready to go, so, uh, we're going to get him ready and cut him loose and hopefully we'll uh, tree some coons. Alright. Okay. There goes the rebel dog. So, hopefully we'll tree a coon here shortly. Alright guys. Uh, I know you can't see anything. But, uh, anyway. We've got a We've got a coon now that we're running with the dog. Uh, right now the dog is running the coon. He hasn't yet treated it. So his uh, his bark is different. Uh, and just, you can hear him in the background here. It'll be a more of a, a long drawn out type of bark. And that is more of a, a trailing bark they call it. And now whenever we do tree the coon, if you'll listen, that is, uh, the bark will be quite a bit faster and the barks will be closer together. And that is what they call the chop. That dog is, is chopping. So anyway, uh, it's two different kinds of barks that you can kind of, kind of tell from, from a dog that's on a trail. Uh, if you just listen, you'll be able to hear him. And it'll be a long, drawn out, slow kind of a ball. And then uh, then once we tree this coon, you can hear. And the dog will have a, a faster, more speedy repetition to his bark. And that is called the chop. So those are two kinds. Just listen for it. All right. Okay guys, well here's the tree, we've treed a coon here, and uh, there you see the rebel dog here, he's doing his best to try to, try to get out the coon. He, he knows it up. He, uh, he, uh, he chased this coon right up his tree. That's how, uh, that's how this whole process works. He'll run this coon, actually run it up a tree where the coon has nowhere to go. And then he sits up and he barks until I come. So. That's how this process works. Now if you stay with me here, I will show you the coon. I 
Okay. Follow me up. Right there. You can see see the coon. Now I'm gonna use what's called a coon squaller and I'm gonna try to make him look at it so where you can see his eyes. Okay. Well, he's not gonna look at us. But uh, anyway. There, there's the coon right there. And you can see he treated it there in that, that nice tree. So, anyway, that is the process of coon hunting. We'll get back with you here in just a little bit. Okay, guys, there's the coon right there. There's the rebel dog. So, uh, Anyway, let's see, he's real happy. But, uh, anyway, there he is, and that's coon hunting. Alright, guys, so, uh, now we've just got back home here, and, uh, we have our, our coon here. This is, this is our coon that, that we've just treed. Anyway, I figured I'd, uh, kind of walk you guys through the next few processes in uh, called the fur handling processes here that we'll do with this coon next alright so now we've got this coon we'll take and we'll skin this coon okay now after we skin this coon he'll look look something like this basically you end up with just just the coon here and uh, especially on coons you have there, there's quite a bit of fat left on this hide okay so now the next process is called the flushing process so now we'll take our skinned coon and we'll come over here to this device and this is what is called a flushing beam and uh, there's a few different types of them this one here is PVC uh, quite a bit of them are, are wood but uh, Anyway, the same process. The process is the same for everything. Uh, we'll take this coon and we'll turn him inside out and put him on this fleshing beam. And then basically, we'll take this tool here. And this is what's called a fleshing knife. And we'll take that fleshing knife and we'll basically scrape all of the remaining uh, fat and and a little bit of a. Uh, tissue and stuff off of that hide. We'll end up with just a a hide with the fur left on it. And then he'll go to the stretcher. So that is that is what the uh, the flushing beam here is for. Okay, next we'll put him on the stretcher. Now there's two kinds of stretchers. Uh, there's a wire stretcher and a wooden stretcher. Okay, this this is a a wood stretcher here. Now these wooden stretchers, they're made for uh, for the particular animal that they're going to stretch. This is a a coon stretcher here, and then this is a a wire stretcher for a raccoon. The wood stretcher is more of a forming board. Uh, we'll take the coon and we'll put him on here and tack him down and let him dry. The wire stretcher is basically the same concept, only it has a uh, has hooks here at the bottom to hold the coon on. Now then this is what the coon looks like on the stretcher. This is on the wire stretcher here and basically you're just forming the coon to what the uh, the auction houses that you sell to, what they desire uh, that they need for for the sale. Okay. Now after this coon comes off this stretcher, he looks like this, like so. And now this coon is, is ready for sale, okay? Now raccoons are sold fur in, meaning that you can tell this animal, 
there's the skinned one okay basically this raccoon is inside out okay right inside there that's the fur hence the the name fur in no other animals are sold fur out but raccoons are sold fur in so that coon right there is ready for sale okay now another thing I figured I'd share with you is uh, it's what called pelt primeness okay now in the winter months these pelts of all animals will turn you can see this is a like a, a white or a, a cream colored skin okay now this here is another raccoon but this is what's called a blue hide you can see it's quite a bit darker than this hide and basically uh, there's a few different uh, ways that the pelt turns there's some chemicals in the body that that turn the pelt uh, the amount of sunlight during the day and uh, the cold weather all have factors that turn this pelt from from this blue color to this white color and basically for around here in this area these pelts will be uh, they'll be prime from somewhere around middle October to uh, to early in the spring and that's that's pretty much for all over give or take a, a, a little while so the majority of the year these uh, these animals they look like this with a blue hide and then during the winter months the colder months this is what the uh, the prime hide looks for and the fur gets quite a bit thicker as you would expect during the winter months for from this hide here to this hide here so anyway uh, I hope that helps and gives you a little bit of insight here on uh, the fur handling aspect of it uh, hope you learned something so anyway that's uh that's coon hunting and fur handling hope you all enjoyed all right we'll talk to you all later okay guys uh, a couple other things here's what a uh, a finished coyote looks like there and then uh, this is what a, a beaver looks like they're uh, they're stretched flat on boards I'll show you real quick uh, of what they look like on the boards but that's what a beaver looks like okay that's what the beaver looks like while he's getting stretched stretched out there on a piece of plywood on a board okay guys uh, I figured I'd also share with you uh, some of the equipment that uh, that's used in in coon hunting especially nowadays uh, I know you ha guys been reading uh, where the red fern grows so uh, we use quite a bit different equipment than uh, than what you guys will, will see in the movie whenever you watch the movie but uh, anyway they used lanterns and and things like that today this is this is basically what we use here uh, this is my light here and uh, basically the setup is here we've got one one powerful light here and it's it's on a a ball cap style here uh, I've got a little little light there for uh, for walking and then and then here we've got a a more powerful more powerful light for shining the trees also uh, here we've got a a handheld spotlight and that's all on a on a belt there okay uh, next here we've got this is just a lead to walk the dogs around remember now these these are hunting dogs so they don't they don't quite heal like like your little pet so we gotta have a lead to walk our dog back at the end of the hunt okay now also I've you can see whenever you watch the videos the dogs got two collars on him okay one collar is 
is this here and uh, basically what this has on it is uh, this has the dog's name and uh, and my phone number in case this dog was to get lost because we are doing this at night and uh, and if somebody was to find him they could they could call me and I could come pick it up and then this is also this material here is reflective so I can see it see it in the woods now you might have seen this this red flashing light in the videos and all this is is a uh, that's all it is is a red flashing light it's more of a beacon light uh, so where I can I can see the dog as he's as he's walking through the woods now this collar here this is uh this is what they didn't have in the book <coughs> excuse me uh this is what's called a, a GPS collar this is a, a, a GPS unit here similar to what uh what you guys might have seen in your parents cars and what it is is this is connected to this collar here this collar goes around the dog and uh, then it relays information back to this this unit uh, that I keep this handheld unit and basically what this what this unit does is it allows me to see right where right where the dog is at any given time you can see here it's got got his name there rebel and then uh, it'll have an arrow whenever everything's turned on and it'll point to uh, to where to where he is and then it'll also give a map so I can usually find him wherever he is and it saves a lot of walking so anyway that's a little bit of the uh, the equipment that's that's used in coon hunting especially nowadays it's it's a little bit different than it was back then but anyway all right guys i hope you enjoyed all this so uh we'll uh, we'll talk to you later